Hi, this is Teal from Punkablocks.com. Today I'm going to compare the different brands of collapsible travel watercolor brushes. These are the travel watercolor brushes I'm going to show you today with the exception for this one. This one is just a normal brush. I just want to show you this one for comparison purpose. This is a wooden handle, a natural hair, bristle. So the height for this net normal brush is roughly similar to the travel brushes. These travel brushes are collapsible. What I mean by that is you can take out the dismantle the body into two parts and then use it the body to cover the bristle and it becomes a collapsible brush you can put it into your watercolor palette if the if this is actually small enough to fit into your palette in this case um, this one from Midas Touch is a bit too big to fit into a box like this Let me show you the ones that I have one by one from left to right. These three brushes are made of synthetic bristol. Let me zoom in, zoom in a bit closer so you can see. They come in the round form, the filbert and the flat. The flat brush is a bit, um, it's not as practical as let's say a real flat brush because the weave is a bit short. Same, the filbert is quite nice to use. The round brush is also pretty nice, but all these are synthetic brushes, um, so they do not hold as much water compared to natural hair brushes like the Sable or Kalinsky Sable. So this is oh, another, another thing to take note of is many of these brushes, if not all, they come with this small hole behind. This is to ventilate the bristles to sort of keep them dry. But in real life, if you do not use that to dry your brush. For me, I will keep the brush dry outside to make sure that it's dry before I actually uh, cap it. Because there's no way that this small hole is going to dry your brush. And if you put a wet brush into your cap like this and don't use the brush for a few weeks, it's going to be it's going to grow moldy so that's something to take note of the next two brushes I want to show you is the Kolinsky uh, brushes this is made by this manufacturer called Konosio this is made in Japan the Bristol is made of Kolinsky sable it's a pretty streamlined brush. They only come with these two sizes and they only have the round and the flat version. One important thing to note about all these collapsible brushes is um, be careful when you are putting the cap back onto the bristle. You do not want to get any hairs tangled when you are putting in back when you are putting the cap back because the Kolinsky Sable brushes are quite expensive so usually I will put them back very very slowly and make sure that none of the hair gets uh, caught up this is a very good brand Connoisseur another very good brand is the Escoda. Escoda is a company from Spain. They make a lot of brushes. They also have the travel brushes for many of their series. For example, here we have the Versatile. This gold colored body is the Reservoir and we have the Optimo. Yep. The Reservoir is sorry, the Versatile is actually made of synthetic Bristol, but they are designed in such a way that they can mimic the qualities of a sable brush. It comes very close, especially for the larger size. But when it comes to a small size, the sable the sable brush still holds much more water. But when it comes to a larger versatile brush, I think you can just go for the versatile because it's cheaper, because it's synthetic. Kolinsky sable brushes they can get a bit expensive now for small brushes like this 
it's affordable, but when the size gets bigger, the price goes up exponentially. So when you want to buy a big brush, it's worthwhile to check out the Versatile. Then the other two uh, is the Reservoir and Optimal. They both use Kolinsky Sable, but for Reservoir, Escoda said that they only use the male Kolinsky Sable uh, hair for the Reservoir. And for Optimal, they use a mixture of male and female. The hair for Optimal is a bit softer. But both this, of these brushes, they snap back to a point very easily. The brushes, when they are dry, the hair tends to be uh, tends to fray out a bit. So when they are dry like this, be careful when you are putting the cap back on. Usually, I will wet them first before I put them back on. So in this case, I added some water just to make sure that the hair stay together. But before I put on the cap, I will make sure that the hair is dry and then I put it back on. When it's dry, the hair will, will continue to stay together, so um, it's good that way. The size for this brush in the collapsed form is uh, small enough for you to put inside a palette box like this. And that's the same thing with the connoisseur brush that I showed you earlier. You can also fit it into a box like this. Then let's move on to the Da Vinci brush. Da Vinci travel brushes, they are a bit different compared to Escoda in the sense that the body design is different. So we have plastic, uh, some sort of resin body. This is made in Germany. And I have two versions here. This is the metal body and this is the plastic body. So they come in different sizes, but for this version, it comes only from size one to size six. This is a size six. And this is a size six as well, but this one is shorter than this one. This is the my first brush, my first travel brush. You can see that the sticker here is, uh, even there should be some barcode here, but it's very well worn. If you maintain your brush well, you will be able to uh, use the brush for a long time. They are quite durable, but this one, I've used it for years. The hair is starting to a bit fray up already. So I can no longer get a sharp point with this particular brush anymore. But it's worth the money because I've used this for a few years already. This is the larger version. Of course, you cannot fit this into the watercolor palette box, so I just throw this into my pocket or my bag. Both of these brushes are made of Kolinsky sable hair, so they snap back to a point very nicely. And this is also Kolinsky Sable hair, but this is a bit different in the sense that okay, you can still uh, dismantle the body, but to keep this brush, you just pull up this uh, handle here, it will cover the bristle, and then you can use this body to then cap it. Wow. I dropped this brush on the ground on some sand before. So some of the sand actually ouch, got into the uh, body here and when I do this motion a few times the surface of this metal actually got scraped off so now it looks ugly yes it looks ugly but when it's new it looks very nice but so um, but when it's when you get some sand in or dirt inside the handle it's the paint is going to peel off the surface is going to peel off and it does not look nice anymore see uh, I have one piece of uh, something peeling off so I'm not going to do that anymore anyway I've used this for years as well so this one is very well worn as well I would recommend you get the plastic version instead or the Escoda brushes Lastly, we have the rosemary brushes. 
Rosemary is a thing from UK. They make a lot of different brush, travel brushes with different tips. The ones I have here is the round tip. They also have, let's say, the filbert, the flat, the sable, the what's that? The very the one with the very thin one. I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, they have like 10 different sort of uh, brush tip that you can choose from. They are very streamlined design and very compact. And also you can fit it into your watercolor palette box as well. The two brushes I have here, one is made of Kolinsky Sable, one is Red Sable. Red Sable is also made from some sort of weasel, but um, the coat is supposed to be red color. That's why it's called Red Sable. But, well, as you can see here, it's very difficult to tell which one is the Red Sable and which one is the Kolinsky Sable. They look very similar. And one issue I have with rosemary brushes is they don't have the size of the brush printed in some way onto the brush body. So when you have two brushes like this, you won't be able to differentiate the two. And for me, I, I'm not sure which one is the Kolinsky and which one is the Red Sable. But for other brands, they have the size printed onto the brush body, which is very useful. So for me, for Rosemary, I will usually paste a plastic and then I will write the size down. So that's something uh, Rosemary should do. They should at least try to write their, the size or the type of brush onto somewhere onto the brush. But in terms of quality, they are very good. All Kolinsky brushes are very good, very high quality brushes. Rosemary brushes, I think they are a bit on the softer side. Also, they can maintain a sharp edge, but when it comes to sharp, uh, sharp point, I will go for Da Vinci and Ascoda. Rosemary, I find that they can get a sharp point, but sometimes it can be a bit difficult to control, mainly, mainly because the Bristol is a bit, uh, how should I say, bulb. It's like a big bulb. But for Kolinsky, this one is a Da Vinci one, you can see that tapers a uh, very uh, tapers tapers very well into a sharp point it's a very minute difference but when it comes to painting you will actually notice uh, that you can get more detail you can have better control with uh, Kolinsky Sable from Da Vinci and Escoda but Rosemary definitely the quality is there now I'm going to show you the differences between the strokes that the brushes can achieve. Let me start with let's say the synthetic brush from the Midas Touch. This is synthetic so it doesn't hold as much water but I'm just going to show you the strokes it can achieve. Just uh, three strokes. Then let's try the Da Vinci brush. Same thing, I'll just make some paint. This is a size 10, so it's not a very fair comparison, but it holds much more water, not just because of the size, but because the Bristol, um, the Kolinsky hair just can hold much more water. Then we have the synthetic brush from Versatile series, the Escoda brand. I think you can get pretty sharp lines as well if you draw carefully. Also this um, Da Vinci one, I'm going to show you the sharp lines you can you can make even though the brush is so big, you can still achieve a very sharp line. And this is the rosemary brush. This should be a red sable. It holds a lot of water as well. It's 
very soft and very nice to use. When it comes to performance, uh, if you are going to be using a sable brush, the performance is going to be very similar. But if you're using a synthetic brush, you are going to run out of water very fast with uh, every application and you have to constantly go back to load your paint and just paint it and then have to reload and paint very consistently. You do not get that kind of issue with a sable brush. So that's something to take note. So which brand do I prefer? Do I recommend? If you are going for different shapes, if you like different shapes like flat brush, filbert, round or the tweed brush or some other brush, go for rosemary because they have a lot of different variety when it comes to the design of the bristles. But otherwise if you just want a round brush, a normal round brush, then you can just go for Escoda, Da Vinci or the Connoisseur brush. As long as you get a sable brush, if you can afford it, get a sable brush because they are they offer better control, they hold more water and it's just a pleasure to use them. They last for quite long as well, so even though they're expensive, although over the long run, it's still worth the money. The only brush that I do not recommend is this brush. This is the Da Vinci Travel Voyage brush for issues that I mentioned much earlier. Even though it uses uh, sable hair, but it's um, I have, a pro I have an issue with the body itself. That's all for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so because there are going to be more sketching tips and techniques, uh, product reviews and sketchbook features. Thanks and have a nice day.